Hey, my name is Shanshan. I sell art on shanshan.co, and today we're going to review, we're going to react to Valerie Lynn. So Valerie Lynn is this artist. Um, she has very few videos. I looked at her channel. She has four, eight, eight videos. <laughs> So normally I wouldn't review a channel with eight videos. I mean, what do you have to learn? But then I saw a view count like um, one week ago it was 130,000, four weeks ago 760,000, 204,000 before that, 113,000. So she's getting these really high view counts, which just doesn't make sense for only having eight videos. So there's kind of a mystery element. She's really nailing um, the YouTube algorithm, obviously, and also making good videos, obviously. So it's very strange. And I was really going to ignore this. I was like, oh, this, there's no reason to cover this, no reason to cover this. But then it just, the curiosity got the best of me. And I was just like, what is with these videos, right? Why are they so popular with eight videos? Like, I have 700. And one of her videos has all the more views than all my channel. And I'm like, how does that even make sense? <laughs> Especially because um, painting tutorials, if you don't know, there's about 20, 30, 40 of these every day, every week. There's tons and tons of material. So you're like, how is this girl surpassing all of this? So she must have a very unique approach. So let's go check it out. Volume is crazy high. So she has like on her channel, she has this little, um, I think her latest video is playing as her intro video. And then she just has uploads, so not many playlists, but she only has eight videos, so you really don't need to make playlists at this point, but it is makes sense. Um, I think in her playlist, let's see, there's no playlist, so she hasn't even started a playlist, it's a brand new channel. Makes sense. She has pretty good thumbnails, um, very catchy titles that are very long and kind of a lot of different, you know, just Google sensitive kind of words. They're not your typical how to paint, but it's kind of like the day in the life of an artist. So let's go check out one of the videos. So this particular video is called Loneliness Improve My Art and Mindset. Forest visit, paint with me, create cozy art vlog. So just a lot of word verbiage there, which is obviously catching the attention of YouTube somehow. So nice music. So you got an intro of like how to make a canvas. And it's changing up the video angles here. <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure those are artist quality uh, lever bars. So she's kind of showing each one of the steps. Like she lays the canvas out, she puts the frame on it, she cuts around the frame. Now she's getting the staples loading. So every single step of building a painting she's including. So it builds a lot of drama where this is going. Hey guys, welcome to my home studio. <clears throat> it's finally time for a big oil painting. I will talk about what being alone can give to you when you see it as a positive influence in your life. So she's using kind of jump cuts, so she's cutting a lot of the uh, video out, but she's just using real-time cuts, but then it's skipping ahead, skipping ahead, skipping ahead. So that has a nice pace to it. It doesn't, it, it's not boring, because if you sh show this in real time, it's really boring. I've done a video of myself just on making a canvas, so it's just kind of this nice slow pace, but at the same time, she's cutting out the boring part. We're going to skip ahead a little bit. And even less people in the stores. And it's also a good idea to go out on your own because there's nobody you can ask for an opinion. So this is really nice. She's going to the art store. Sometimes I've included some of my tutorials. So she has kind of prepped the canvas and then goes and gets more material at the art store. So that makes it very interesting. You get a day in the life of and where she lives. You have to go through that monologue in your head. Ask yourself the questions. <clears throat> Do I need this? For what am I going to use it? Can I afford this? And so on. This is, you know, you get a good feel of the art store. Let's get back to the studio. You don't have to fear anything. <clears throat> and also be aware of what and who you let yourself be surrounded. 
influence comes from inside and outside. So brand new palette, easel, barely used easel. <laughs> Which makes sense, she has eight videos, right? How much painting has she done? So here she's building it, which is interesting because it's a little bit out of order where it originally was. And we are going to school because I can't be that loud at home. All right, so she's gonna go to school. Let's go start the painting here. Put them in the early stages of your painting or put a lot of focus on making that part look okay. nice. You don't even prioritize getting the fundamentals right. Composition, shape, proportion, value, color. And in the end, you make the details. Say no to the instant gratification you get by painting those dots in the eyes. Sometimes I don't even paint the details. And after a week, I realize that I actually wanted to paint her earrings. But I forgot about them because I was so focused about the fundamentals and the painting. So I like kind of the way she's painting. It's very broad brushstroke. And then, you know, obviously go into the detail, which I think is a really smart way to paint. We'll skip ahead a little bit. Choose topics you could find interesting. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll leave some recommendations in the description box down below, so check it out. And when my painting process allows me to, I let a movie or documentary play in the background. Make sure to also enjoy the process of whatever you do. So she's kind of splicing it together, but she's using mostly real time and just cutting out the unnecessary parts. So that's a really good technique because you get the feel of the paint hitting the canvas and you hear all the sounds. She's added music, but you still hear all the background sounds. I know my painting tutorials, I usually cut all the sound out and just kind of speed through it. So this is a really nice technique, I think. Let's go ahead a little bit. So she's using a couple different zooms, so that's really nice. <clears throat> you get into read details of how she made the painting. So that's a really nice idea to go from kind of the overall screw room, then you go into a really tight focus on these different detail shots. <clears throat> Skip ahead a little bit. Sometimes it gets too much at home, so you have to go out, okay? Find your balance in life. Being alone and also being with other people. And what I also do... So she has like kind of this uh, philosophy she's added to her video. I would say a little bit cheesy, but you know, it makes more of a vlog, like the philosophy of how she paints, how she relaxes. And so it gives it kind of a full version of her art day. Uh, let's skip ahead to the next video. So this one is learn to let go and evolve as an artist. Spend days on a painting and destroy it. Cozy art vlog. So again, a lot of different keywords in there. She's added a little bit of symbols. So it's catchy with the heart and the little plant thing, um, which I don't know how to do either. So that's an interesting thing. She's added little emojis in there. So that kind of catches your attention, I think, in the title. Skip ahead. Once upon a time, far away in a big city, there was a young girl named Valerie. Valerie spent most of her time in her tiny home studio and loved to create. So this is a really cool idea. She has kind of a master storyteller in the background, introducing her as kind of her pencil, this poor trapped starving artist or something trapped in her studio. And it's, it's a really fun way to start the video with a lot of story in here. But creation, like everything else, has its ups and downs. Hey guys, in this video I want to show you why it can be helpful to be less attached to certain things, especially when creating. The example here for will be an oil painting. Even though it took me a lot of planning, building and priming the canvas and painting. So again, she's showing kind of building the canvas, prime the canvas, and then she sketched it in color pencil and she's comparing that. Um, she's doing the old kind of master's way of painting which is you start with a sketch and you do, she's done two sketch studies and then she's moving on to the painting. So you get much more realistic detail and you work out a lot of the composition issues. 
and how you might want to change that along the way. So that's uh, very helpful when you do a bigger painting so you don't waste any of the painting and you get the composition right out of the gate. And then you're just worrying about the colors are right, do you want to change any of the colors and that kind of thing. So it's a really great way to get started on your painting. Let's skip ahead a little bit. I realized I don't have any skin colors. I just mixed the colors to get a skin tone. But we will go to an art store and pick up some skin tones. Let's go. So I just, on my last painting, I struggled with the skin tones too. So this is a really smart idea. You go get the actual skin colors. And she's showing physically picking out the uh, pencils at the art store. So it's a really cool way to kind of evolve the story, I think. I can. I usually have a rough sketch, a detailed pencil drawing, and a color study. But this time I wanted to change things up and did the planning with these colored pencils. But before we see Valerie begin to paint, let's see how much effort she puts into building the canvas. Ooh, building the canvas again. So again, this is really smart. Um, I've done videos on how to construct a canvas, but I never include it, you know, painting by painting by painting by painting. I usually use prepped canvas. So this is really smart if you're going to build it yourself, which is usually how you start when you're beginning, just to save money. And so I think I really like this idea of kind of building the canvas, throw it in there, and it just gives it much more of a visceral feel to the painting video. So she's gonna fold it up, let's skip ahead. So she says priming it, which is really good too. <clears throat> Look, I got a new haircut for the first time after so many years. I went to the salon. Okay. We go outside, we go outside. And that's my outfit. So again, she's going out, a um, little day in the life included into the video. So you get a feel for the city she lives in, the food she likes to eat, kind of um, talking to her fans on laptop outdoors. So you get a really kind of visceral feel of the day in the life, which is really cool. Add in there, let's just place a little bit. So skip ahead a little bit here. So different cam camera angles too, makes it a really strong video. Detail on the painting. So again, she's using that same technique where she's using so real time cut, real time re cut, real time cut. And so you do a fast pace, but you just show the actual painting process. So it's an interesting way to edit the video. Or the meaning. Yes, the meaning of the painting was not enough. I remember again, I can't turn any drawing, any gouache painting into an oil painting. Another reason why I felt uncomfortable is because I have to take myself as a reference. I don't like to paint myself that often. I want to paint other people. Fun. So this is a really good thing. She's talking, she's doing a self-portrait. She doesn't really like to do it. So it kind of the personal drama behind that. So again, she's adding way more to the story than your average kind of generic landscape painting, for example. And there's really like why she paints it, what she likes about it, what she doesn't like about it. So again, building much more of a story behind this painting. I'm less sad about failure because I know that failure or struggle is part of the things you do. Without them, achieving a certain skill level wouldn't be that great. What will happen if this I paint or draw? Or so she's talking about the struggle again. We'll skip ahead. Create it again and make a better job next time. Don't fear to lose. All the experience and information you need what does she do? is in your head. Oh my god, she cut the whole painting off. Why? <laughs> Oh my God, she destroyed this painting. It wasn't that bad either, so. But it makes for a very, very dramatic painting video. You destroyed the video, you're like, dude, you just destroyed part of that painting. Again, showing a lot of the detail shots uh, that kind of builds the story. Valerie's videos. So yeah, she definitely kind of destroyed the painting. 
I don't think she was really going to destroy it that way. She kind of preserved it because there's part of the painting preserved. So she kind of just reduced the size in a way. Um, you can still sell that painting at that size. It's just kind of going to wrap. But then it's going to be close to the nose and everything. Maybe she just destroyed it because it was her own self-portrait. I don't think it was a bad painting. I just think she doesn't like to paint herself. Um, so that's interesting. You can see she's very uh, girlish, very young artist. Going to be very self conscious of doing the portrait if you don't like it exactly you're going to destroy it but it was a pretty decent portrait so it's kind of sad she destroyed it but she's got probably a crazy view count from this it's 129,000 views already so let's go to the next video see so hopefully i'm adjusting the sound correctly in this i don't know if i am or not but we shall find out soon enough because her videos are very loud for some reason so let's so this makes more sense Ikea! <laughs> Who hasn't been there? <laughs> Some Berlin. So it's funny, there's kind of pastel color in this museum, but like if you go to Cincinnati, they use these bold, bold colors. <laughs> and you have like bold red in the background, green in the background. You're like, what are you doing? Like pure red, pure green. You're just like, so if you go to Cincinnati, you'll see some crazy colors in the museums there. Great art, and then you'd be like, why is this crazy color? It's not like a really light color. It's just a super intense color. Uh, but in the Berlin, they've used like slightly pastel, so it's tasteful. It's not white, but it has that kind of playfulness to the colors. Uh, I think way more tasteful than Cincinnati. Uh, that's kind of a side tangent. Hey guys, since I spent most of the time at home, I decided to give my room an upgrade. <clears throat> I really like the view of a window on the left side of my room and I thought it would be really refreshing seeing those trees out of a window whenever I paint. Yeah, this is a really smart idea. Always set your studio right next to the light. I have mine right next to the only light in the house basically. So the best lighting in the house you want to have where you paint because natural light will really help you paint to the true colors of the painting. If you paint in a dark and you're using artificial light, you might be slightly off in those colors. You can use daylight bowls, but you can be slightly off there. So if you paint in daylight, it's gonna be way better. The best uh, way to view. I usually use daylight, I used to use daylight bulbs when I worked in the basement, but now I've got kind of natural light. So very nice so detail shot. A few days with a setup. Woke up really early. Just scroll ahead a little and bit. My mom painted my wall in pink, and after a few years, I painted it in blue with some green leaves and birds, but as I can remember, the green had a really ugly shade. Maybe that's why I lost the color out of my sight for a while. So here we are again. Which is crazy, she's kind of hand mixing the paint, which means if you run out of the color, you're not gonna be able to make it again. So it makes more sense to have it mixed at the paint store and then just bring it home professionally. It looks way cooler for a video if you hand mix it because you're a painter, so you should mix paint, right? So for video's sake, you would hand mix it, but obviously um, if you're really redoing the room, I would just go to your Home Depot and have them hand mix it and say, I'm using number 345 or whatever it is, but it's not going to be as cool, but it makes more sense. You could actually film them making the paint. Painting the wall in green, but in a better shade. And spoiler right away, I will be painting a wall in my room in pink too. Thanks, Mom. So I don't think she knows how to paint. You use that roller really long strokes to get it right, but... microphone arrived. I have the same one. <laughs> That's the best mic. How do I sound? Yeah, that is the best mic to get. Get the Rode mic. That's what I have right here on the thing. It's perfect. Scroll ahead a little bit. So this is really cool. She's going and picking up different items to kind of redecorate the room, which is really smart as far as a vlog. So that's a really girly, she has a really kind of girly, really fun setup. It's very light. She uses, I think, oil paint primarily or very little paint, so she's not spilling the paint. Um, so she's working very clean. A lot of artists get much more dirtier, but you know, her room is like spotless, which I always find strange because there's always paint all over where I paint, but <laughs> I guess I'm just a real painter. I don't know, but she's a very good painter for her age. It's really impressive. Let's go ahead. So setting up the room here. 
100% doing these things today. I'm gonna just begin out of my bed and then I take the ladder and we keep on rolling, okay? So just begin, even though you don't feel like doing it. Look, it's so cute. That's very European. <laughs> it was very common in Europe, like, <laughs> but you know, girls like these kind of white sheer curtains, so makes sense. It's very, it's kind of a girlish feel, so, and she's a girl, so. So let's skip ahead a little bit. All right, so she's building that. So here's one story about home stuff. Oh, guys, I just have 50% off, it's a fine. Oh, look at that. It's way too hard to wear this mask in the store. I'm just really tired. It's a library. This place is where I take my art history lectures. Sadly, it's online. The other part of the university. So it's kind of cool showing the museum and all that stuff. It's, you know, Sachi's paying for the university, but then it's an online class. Like, you could just do YouTube for free <laughs> versus paying full price for a university class, and then you're not even meeting people. But, you know, it's just COVID rules at the point uh, where we are right now. So it's kind of talking about um, her day in her life, you know, how she's tired and all that, um, which I guess adds a lot to the video. I mean, it doesn't really add much for me, but it's kind of interesting. So buying more decoration items. Yeah, here she's using pre -mixed paint, which is makes way more sense. It's always interesting too, to see how the supplies that you know, home goods store is so different. Like American ones is always in cans or plastic containers. This one's just like this flat container, which is nice for painting, but it's kind of like that much paint really. <laughs> but I don't think she's gonna use so much paint, so maybe that's fine. So this is something you can only do in the northern climate, either in Germany where she's staying or say in the Midwest, the northern Midwest, Seattle, that kind of thing. If you put this in Florida, plants in your house, you're going to have bugs everywhere. So do never put plants in Florida. You'll have bugs everywhere, literally, unless you use plastic plants. A very cute and cheerful environment she's creating here. Let's go ahead. These annoying ads. So on the stage you have blue tape, which is even better because it's not as sticky. Um, white this sticky sticky tape is good for painting on a painting um because it does give you a really crisp line but it pulls off too much sometimes so off the wall you can actually pull the paint off so I'll definitely use blue tape in the states definitely what a girl would uh, decorate. Uh, not my taste, obviously. <laughs> but it's a girl's video, so what do you expect, you know? So very good detail shots here. So that's basically Valerie Lynn and her channel. Again, it's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight videos. But she has a very good storytelling ability, so that's kind of why these videos are more popular than your average painting video, because it has a day in the life. So that day in the life is giving a way more unique feel versus just your standard, like, put a canvas down, paint it, fill, and then finish. That's one style of painting tutorial, and then you never get a feel for the artist. You never get, there's not much personality coming across. So she has a very bold personality coming across in these videos, her own personal story, her own adventures around town, which adds a lot to these painting videos. I've done that before in my other videos. I haven't used it recently, 
but I think that's a very strong way to paint. It's definitely, you know, I'm thinking about that in my own mind. Maybe I got to include a lot more day in the life of because it really adds to those videos and gives you a feel of what the artist is going through and that kind of connection with the artist is much more real. So I think her storytelling ability is really why these videos are so popular. She has good B-roll and different shots, you know, up and down, zoom in, zoom out. And she's showing the whole process of how to build a painting from raw canvas, the structure bars, uh, gesso it, hang it up. And then she's doing her studies, one or two studies, and then she's doing the painting itself. And the time lapse is interesting in the painting because it's kind of real time snip, real time snip, real time snip. So it's kind of like a way of doing time lapse. But all the time lapse is really just real time cuts. So you're just cutting out, you know, paint 20 seconds, cut three minutes, paint 20 seconds, cut two minutes. So it's an interesting way to do the time lapse because it doesn't feel like it's sped up. It's actually just chopped up, right? So it's an interesting way to video edit there. I really kind of like that style. It's an interesting way to do it. I've seen it a little bit before in Matt Chesco. He does a similar style, but even more abstract, I would say, in his video editing. You really don't know how he paints. It's just kind of this mystery that he just adds more mystery to the painting process. He doesn't really reveal anything. Um, she's revealing how she paints, but it's interesting that she's so popular. She's very young. I thought for sure she'd be nude or something in here. <laughs> like, how is he this popular, right? But it's really the story is very strong. She's just being herself and really natural uh, day in the life of an artist, a young girl. And so that comes across. Um, it is amazing that she's got this view count with just this many few videos. It makes me wonder whether she had maybe eight other videos and she just chopped out the bad videos maybe. I don't know. It just seems strange that she would start automatically straight from a good story building style. But maybe that's the case. Who knows? Uh, maybe she just stumbled upon the best way to do a video. She studied it really strongly before she started. I don't know. It's a little fishy. I mean, my first video was okay. I mean, it was like nine, 10 years ago. So I think I had some good story elements back then, but uh, the fact that she's getting hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views is very curious and very interesting. But it shows you the real power of doing story editing, studying how to use the right lenses, to getting the right camera, getting the right sound. Sound is very crucial in a video. If you don't have the right sound and it's like echoey, like one of the artists I covered was echoey sound because the whole background was echoey. And sometimes you can't do anything about it. Like in this room, I can't really uh, foam the back here, the wall, because that's a kitchen. But ideally, I would have that all foamed up and it would be a what richer, softer sound, which I had in my old office with my dad's house. That sound for the movie recordings I did were very, very good sound quality there because it's very soft. It's very deadened all the echo. And here I have the echo in the background. I have a little bit here protection, but not enough. And I think she has a little bit of echo, but not too bad in her videos. This room is really, really big, so the echo is kind of broad-based, and she has curtains and some soft material to kind of soften that here and there. So she probably does have some sound deadening. But yeah, just really great video. A very well-accomplished artist to start with, so that makes a big, big difference because people only want to see really good artists. So this, she's a pretty good artist already as a youth. You know, it doesn't look like she's done that much. She had a lot of talent going into the studio, so probably she had, you know, hundreds of hours getting to that level, I would say. And then she started filming, which it would have been cool to see her earlier videos and then kind of work her way up, but you're going to lose that now. So that's the disadvantage of kind of coming in when you're already pretty good. You're going to lose that whole evolution. That's what you really want to see back in, you know, go back in the day. You're like, oh my God, this is like, like when she cuts out her own self-portrait, you're like, no, that's a pretty good painting. What are you doing? <laughs> like it's good for video clicks to like cut your own painting up and people are like, oh, you just destroyed a painting, right? So for shock value, that's good, but don't destroy your own portraits that are perfectly good, but maybe she's just very shy about it. I mean, she's very young, so that makes sense. But yeah, I would recommend her to understand for video editing style. I think it's really good in story building. It's very strong. If you'd like to subscribe, you can subscribe below. And I'll see you in the next Artist React video.